All right, so you want to find MBIT on federal government contracts and you stumbled upon SAM.gov and you want to find government contracts on there. How do you search and how do you find government contracts that are a good fit for your business on SAM.gov? That's what we're going to be discussing today. I'm going to go over the steps one by one. So follow along and let's get started. First thing you want to go to SAM.gov. It's SAM.gov. So Hopefully that's the easiest step. Once you are here, you'll be tempted if you scroll down to search using this search bar, but I highly recommend that you skip that. And I'm going to show you exactly why. Our goal today is to maximize this platform to its fullest potential. So we're not missing out on great contracting opportunities for your business. What you want to do instead is you want to click on search. And in 2025, they changed the view. So now you have these on the top. What you want to search for, if you're looking specifically for government contracting opportunities or bids, you want to click on contracting. And that's basically filtering. So you're only searching for contracting opportunities. Once you click on that, you're going to find out that the filters here have changed. You're seeing more options. So it's key to start with selecting this. Second thing, what you want to do, you can search using the keyword search in here. You want to select all words and it's there by default. And here you type in your search term. You don't want it to be too specific or too broad because the search on sam.gov is not the best. So what you would type in, for example, this is a broad term. What you're going to have with this is a lot of results. If you want to go more into specifics, you can try, but in most cases, you're not going to find a lot of results. So this is one option. I'm going to show you a better way of doing this, but you can first as a first step, just use search here and try with multiple keywords that align with your business. Now, the second filter you're going to see is the federal organization. So this one, in most cases, you're not going to use it, but unless you know a specific agency that you work with, let's say the Department of Defense or NASA. So if you know there's a contract by them, that's a good fit for you, then you can come here and filter by that. So you would type in Defense, Department of Defense, and you would choose that. But in most cases, if you're just looking, for example, for opportunities that match your business, you don't need to filter by the federal organization. An important filter that I highly recommend you use is dates. You're going to have two options. One here is the response or offer deadline. So that's when you have to submit a bid or response by. Then the second thing is the updated date. So this could be the posted date when a solicitation or a pre-solicitation was posted or when it was last updated. Key thing here is deadline. It's subjective, but I usually want to give myself some time. Uh, to place a bid. So if it's in the next day, it's going to be hard for me to put anything of value together in one day. So if you, I want to give myself some time, you could say, okay, I want it next week, next month, and so on. Now, another key pro tip that I would highly recommend is using the updated date. So if you want to know of opportunities that are recently updated and they're being posted as of late, so there's interest for them and they're being updated, uh, what you could do is you can filter by things that were updated in the past few days. So this way you're seeing things that are actively being looked at by the agency or updated by the agency. So that's when it comes to the, the dates. It's very important that you filter by those. So you're giving yourself some time. The next thing is the notice that, and here where a lot of people, I think they face some issues or they don't understand what to filter by. So there are multiple different notice types. I'm going to try and explain each one of these. So, so a source of thought is you can think of it when the government is saying, who can do this? They're just asking the question. They're doing market research. So that's the earliest stage you can think of in the procurement process. Now, once it graduates from that, and in some cases it doesn't have to be source of thought, there's a pre-solicitation. What this means is we are planning to release this soon. So this is going to be a solicitation in the future, but now we're getting a head start of now. So you can get started now, but in the future, this will develop to be a solicitation. Whereas with source of thought, there's no guarantee that it's going to develop into a solicitation. Now, the second thing is the solicitation and combined synopsis and solicitation. Solicitation is, okay, we are accepting bids for this. Put in your bid, we're ready to accept bids. Combine synopsis and solicitation. You could think of it as in the pre-solicitation and, and solicitation all in one. You could think of it, here's everything in one shot, go ahead and submit your offer. And then finally, you have the award notices and justification. This is at the end stage of the procurement process. That's when a contract is awarded or is being justified that we gave this company this money to perform this. So if you're looking for new opportunities, you want to filter these out. And I'd highly recommend that you choose all of the above that I mentioned because sources sought and pre-solicitation, although they're not asking for an official bid, it's a great way to get yourself, uh, get your foot in the door and get ahead in the process before everyone else kind of bids. 
And also it's a good way to develop a relationship with the agency. So go ahead and select sources sought, pre-solicitation, solicitation, combined synopsis, and solicitation. Now what you want to do if the search result here are not the best, what you want to filter by is something called NAICS code. And that's, you can think of it as a code for every single industry or every single service or business practice. So how do you find NAICS codes relevant for your business? What I would recommend, there are a lot of tools, but what I would recommend is using AI. You can use ChatGPT, Claude, whatever AI you use. You can come here, put in your business description. So this is my business description. And you could tell the AI, generate top five relevant NICS codes for my business. So as you can see, it's giving me the five most relevant ones and with description. So go ahead, copy these over and search for them here. Make sure to remove the keyword search as well. Ideally, you want to search either by the keyword search or next code. So as you can see, I put here all of the relevant key, uh, next codes for my business. And now I'm getting a lot of results. As you can see, 177 results. And these are specific to what my business or my operation is in. Obviously, you can filter by one, two, as many as you want. You can narrow it down. You can widen your search results. It's really based on your preference. Now, once we are done with selecting the industry and the next code, you want to select set aside. So these are certificates that are meant to make specific contracts for a specific segment of society. So some of them are for small businesses only. Some of them are for veteran owned businesses. Some of them are for women owned businesses or Indian owned businesses. So based on certificates you have, you need to look into this, what certificates you qualify for as a small business. And I highly recommend that you get these certificates because it will position you in a better way so you can land these contracts that are set aside for businesses like yours. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose small business set aside. As you can see now, you're, we're gonna see less results, but that's good. We're tailoring the search results to match our business. Finally, if the co contract you're performing or the service you provide is tied to a specific location, you want to filter by your state. So I don't recommend using the zip code because it's too specific. And a lot of contracts don't have that. They don't fill it in. So if you if you operate in a specific state or country, then I highly recommend you filter by that as well. As you can see, I filtered by California and now we have only five search results to look into. Obviously this is way too specific, but we're trying to get as many, as little search results as possible because searching is an intensive process and I'm gonna show you why. Finally, you want the status to be active. This is checked by default, but just make sure you don't check inactive because we don't want to look at those. Now you have all of these search results. In most cases, the titles do not make a lot of sense. They don't explain much about this. So what you want to do is select and click on each one of these. You want to come here. Here you'll have information about the agency that submitted this bid that wants you to submit a bid for. Then you have your general information here. You'll find when it was posted. So updated, uh, that's the last update on the solicitation. That's the original posted date. Then you have the offer due date. So here, this is a very important date that you need to look into. And then you have the classification. This is the set aside. As I mentioned, we filtered by total small business set aside. And then here's the NAICS code, which is the industry code for the services we're providing. And then you have the place of performance. Then what you wanna do is look at the description read it and see if this is a good opportunity for you or not. Now, once you make a decision on this, you want to scroll down and learn more about the solicitation from the attachments. So as you can see, this one is a construction a government contract. So there are uh, site visit information. There's also plan information, spec information, access request form for the site visit. And then you have here details about solicitation in general. So you need to download these and read through them and get all the details that are relevant. So you get more details about this opportunity. Finally, there will be displayed some links here, but these usually come either in, the, in here or also in the attachments. And then you have the contact information here. You'll have the contracting officer address and also you will have their uh, name and email. So in most cases, this is the contracting officer that you have to submit your bid to. And also if you have any questions or you want them to clarify anything, this would be the contact person that you need to reach out, send an email to and ask questions or as I mentioned, submit a bid. At the bottom, you will see the history of this solicitation. You can see all the way when it started. In some cases, you'll see from pre-solicitation, then it becomes a solicitation. And if it's awarded, you'll see an award notice. So here you can keep track of the life cycle of this opportunity. Now, this is pretty much how you would search on sam.gov. 
It's not the easiest process, but I would like to show you a better way of searching for government contracts and the app I use, which is called samsearch.co. What you would want to do with this is it makes it extremely easy to search for government contracts. You don't have to use Nix code or you don't have to use specific keywords. You can just mention IT services or construction services, or you can go more into details, services in Oklahoma and it will understand what you are talking about. The also good thing, let's actually filter by active only. Just with a click, you can see that these opportunities are active on sam.gov, but in some cases they have a past deadline. So we want to filter those out because we only want to bid on bids. We only want to make bids on contracts that are that the deadline has not passed. The next nice thing about this is with each one of the results, we are getting an AI generated summary. So we can quickly understand what this bid is all about, what this opportunity is all about. So this one is Department of Justice is seeking proposals for residential center and home confinement services in Tulsa County, Oklahoma. See, it just understood what uh, I understood what the gist about this altogether. I could save it, come back to it later, and I can scroll through all of these results to check which ones make sense and which one I want to bid on or not. Now, once I like one of these, let's say this one, you can see there's a long list of attachments. So with a long list of attachments, it's going to be difficult for me to read through all of these. Let me show you an example. This, for example, is I just downloaded the statement of work and we have 173 pages. That's a lot of text for me to review. So what you can do with this platform is you can first summarize the document and it will jet through it because in most cases, as you can see here, you'll have these numbers and sometimes they don't have description. So this will make it easier for you to understand what the document is about before you download it. Now, as you can see here, we're getting all the key details mentioned in the document. So you know, okay, this document covers evaluation criteria, for example. But let's say you want to understand this on a deeper level. You don't want just to stick to summarizing and downloading all of these documents. What you could do is ask Sam Search AI. Now, this will have context of all of this opportunity the attachments, all of them one by one, and you can go ahead and ask a question. So you could say, summarize this opportunity for me and break down the statement of work in simple terms. And as you can see, it's given us an opportunity summary and we're getting details about the contract, the objective, the service type, and we're also getting sources for each one of the information listed. I can, for example, ask more questions about this. Give me more details about the pricing structure. You can see how it's dwelling more into the details about how there are four tiers. Then you have the in-house services pricing, fixed monthly rate, and so on. So you could have a conversation with it and get all the details that you want instead of reading all of these thousand pages documents. So this way you can get this information in an easy conversation. Another thing that you can do is you're not only able to search on a federal level, but you're also able to search on a state level. So if you want state government contracts, this will make it a lot easier to find these state government contracts. As you can see, there are a lot of them here and you can filter by your state and you'll be able to get access to those as well. Now let's go back to our opportunity. I wanna show you something as well. What you can do is actually generate a proposal. So if you have filled in your documents here where you have your case studies, compliance, past performances and capability statement, and you have all of the attachments in the from the opportunity, you can choose which documents are relevant and based on that, it will be able to generate a first draft for you. So this also makes it very easy to get started with a bid. I hope this was helpful. Make sure to find your government contracts. You can try this out. I'll have a link in the description and the first comment. It will make your life a lot easier. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.